Hey there, art nerds. I promised you guys three Easter slash spring inspired watercolor bookmark projects to get you guys painting. This one is the second today. I'm going to show you guys how to paint an adorable rabbit hiding out in the tall grass. So grab your paints, grab your paper, and let's get going. This is another one of my stash buster tutorials. So today we're going to be using a bookmark size scrap of cotton rag watercolor paper. I believe this is arches. It doesn't really matter so long as it is cold press and cotton rag. We're also going to be working with a variety of watercolors. So I recommend you grab some of your favorites. And if you're looking for recommendations, I've got a bunch of great watercolor reviews here on the channel that'll help you guys out. We're also going to be using some white MT washi tape, which you guys see me use using to secure my bookmark on all four sides. I'm making sure to get a nice, clean, even edge. Not only is this gonna give us a great little white border, but it's also going to hold everything tight while we're adding lots of water. I'm also working with a selection of watercolor brushes. You're welcome to work with your favorites. And I'm starting out with a really light pastel, almost cerulean blue color to create my sky. And I am using some clean water down at the bottom just to blend it out a little bit. I'm gonna raise my my support that I've taped this to so that we can let gravity help us out and with a slightly darker blue color I'm adding a second layer to my sky now it didn't blend out quite as much as I wanted so I'm using some clean water again just to blend that out a little bit and then we have our third darkest blue you don't have to use three blues for this if you don't want to at any point in this tutorial you can stop when you are happy with the results and I'm grabbing a fourth blue just to dab a little bit up at the top so that we're getting this really nice granulated mottled sort of sky. Now I'm wadding up some clean paper towel and I'm gonna use that to kind of dab out a cloud shape. And this is such an easy way to create clouds and it's very simple, but very effective. It's gonna be even more effective once it's had a chance to dry. You can dab out as many clouds as you want. I have three here and I'm gonna use a thirsty brush just to remove some of the excess water. I allowed it to dry completely, totally and fully. And next we're going to paint our rabbit. So if you're painting a rabbit, I would really recommend you pull up some reference of what wild rabbits look like. I will link the reference that I used down in the description below in case you think my rabbit is super cute. I'm working with a softer watercolor brush and I'm gonna try to paint my rabbit entirely in brush strokes. If you're not confident in doing this, you can sketch your rabbit out first in pencil very lightly and then paint it. But I wanted to kind of practice my mark making and practice rendering things entirely in brush strokes, which is a little nerve wracking and it does take some practice. But I promise if you take it slow and you work from reference and you're deliberate in your brush strokes, I believe in you, you can make it happen. You might want to practice some rabbits beforehand. That could be a great way to fill up a sketchbook page with lots of adorable brushwork rabbits. And I'm just kind of taking it slow, looking at my reference and trying to interpret it just in brush strokes. So I'm painting a silhouette of the rabbit. And I wanted to go for something a little different, not just a rabbit hiding in the grass, but this rabbit is actually sitting up on its hind legs and kind of looking around. So I'm going to keep this really pretty simple but I do wanna add a few details. So while this is still wet, I'm gonna go in with a little bit more gray and kinda of dab it in on its chest, on its back, on the top of its head, and let wet into wet do some of the blending work for me. While my rabbit dries, I'm gonna start painting some very simple little wildflowers using bright colors. So I'm painting some pink, 
five flowered, five petaled little daisies in the background. These are a little bit larger than some of the flowers that I'm going to paint later on. And I'm gonna do two layers of flowers. We're gonna have our background flowers that I'm painting right now. And then we're gonna have our foreground flowers that I'm gonna paint after I finish painting the grass. And I'm gonna do the same kind of thing in several different colors, just keeping it very, very simple because these are meant to be background flowers. So I'm doing some little yellow dots to imply little yellow wildflowers. I'm also going to grab some purple and I'm going to do some little purple dots as well so you guys can see super duper simple for the flowers. Once my rabbit has dried, I'm gonna go in and add a few little fur-like details, just using a really, really light hand, just to kind of sketch in some of the darker fur that might that would be on the rabbit's back and would be on the rabbit's top of the head and can kind of create some of the shadow areas so that we can kind of tell one part of the rabbit apart from the other parts of the rabbit. And if you're not comfortable doing this, you can totally skip this step. Now here is a step that I would recommend you don't skip adding the rabbit's eye because it's going to make it look in my opinion a lot cuter now if you want to go really simple with this you could do a black or even like a purple silhouette and just imply that this is a rabbit seen in the distance but if you're going for a more realistic rabbit I would go ahead and paint in the little black eye it looks so cute and I'm also using just a little bit of red really watered down so that it's a pink to paint the rabbit's nose and the inside of the ear so we have this very cute inquisitive little rabbit So for the time being, I'm finished adding details to my rabbit. So now I wanna start painting my grass. And I have a really neat watercolor tutorial that I've already shared with patrons, but I'm gonna share with the public at some point on how to paint watercolor foliage that's really simple and effective. And this is kind of running off of some of the techniques that I go over in that tutorial. I'm starting with an olive green, so a really bright yellow green to do my tallest background grass, the grass that would be kissed by the sun. Then I'm going in with a slightly cooler green. You could use a hooker's green in this case. I'm using kind of almost like a pastel bluish green and I'm kind of filling in with the shorter blades of grass, the ones that are not quite so sun kissed. And I'm trying to fill in the bottom a little bit more since the bottom is looking kind of sparse. Now, if you're working with opaque greens, that can be great for this. This could be a good time to pull out your gouache because that would create some more effective coverage over our rabbit. As it is, I'm gonna have to work a little bit harder to cover the bottom of the rabbit, especially because I didn't finish it out before painting in the grass. I'm going in with an even cooler green. This one's slightly more opaque. Now you can do it wet into wet and let the colors blend. You can wait and allow the colors to dry in between layers. You can do a mix of both, which is kind of what I'm doing here. I'm just impatient. That's, that's my excuse. Or you could opt to not even paint the rabbit. You could just do a beautiful blue cloudy day sky with some wildflowers and some grass. It really kind of depends on how adventurous you're feeling. This is choose your own adventure. So for my next layer, I'm going in with an even cooler and darker green and painting the grass that's more in the shadow, the grass that's more towards the bottom. And then finally, I'm gonna go in with a blue and start painting in kind of the shadows on the grass. So that way we've built up this multi-layer, multi-color, multi-dimensional grass. Well, in reality, what I'm doing is I'm doing another layer of the hooker 
is green, but then I'm gonna go over it with a phthalo blue, so a cooler blue, to paint in the shadows of the grass. Now, if you do that wet into wet, you're gonna lose some of it. But one of the beautiful things about watercolor is that they're going to mix optically, so that blue is actually gonna look kind of like a green. Once that had a chance to dry, I'm gonna go back into my more pastel, my more opaque colors, and I'm gonna paint my foreground wildflower. So I grabbed a beautiful cerulean blue, the same sort of color that we use for the sky, and I'm painting some of the wildflowers in the foreground, the ones that would be closer to the viewer. And I'm kind of doing them at a variety of levels, at a variety of heights, just to kind of add some accent. You can use whatever colors at this point that you want to use. This is up to you. I'm just providing some direction and some inspiration here. But if you have favorite colors, if you are painting this to send it to someone, you can do it that way. If you want to make it more of a bookmark shape where it's longer at the top, so you have this really tall sky, and then you have your rabbit and the grass at the bottom, you can do it that way. If you want to do it as a postcard, you can do it that way. The format is up to you. I'm just trying to provide a little bit of inspiration. So next I've grabbed some white gouache. So this is an opaque watercolor. I'm going to use that to add a tiny little highlight dot in my rabbit's eyes. And I'm also going to use this to paint some whiskers and to add a little bit of delineation to the fur. I'm also going to add some little white dots, almost like baby's breath or clover to my wildflowers as well. And once my rabbit has fully dried, I can remove my masking tape, pulling away at a 90 degree angle. So if it tears, it doesn't tear into the paper. And there we have it, another adorable spring or Easter themed bookmark. If you wanted to, you could hide some Easter eggs in there. You can paint your rabbit whatever color you wish. You can even do pastels or paint a white rabbit, but I'm very fond of wild rabbits. So I wanted to go with a wild rabbit. For today's tutorial, I think he turned out very cute. Hopefully you guys had fun painting along with me. I time-lapsed it here and there just a little bit, but this is a really quick project. Most of what where the time goes is just waiting on your layers to dry. So if you have a hair dryer and you want to speed things up, you can definitely do that with this project because we're not working with masking fluid today. I'm really pleased with how it turned out and I'm really happy I could share it with you guys. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, consider leaving me a big old thumbs up, letting me know that you want more easy watercolor tutorials like this. I've also got loads of great watercolor tutorials here on the channel that'll help get you guys painting. So whether you're just learning how to paint or you're a more experienced painter looking for some inspiration, I think I've got you covered. And if you're not sure what paint will work for you, I've also got a ton of paint reviews as well. So down in the comments below, let me know what your favorite kind of rabbit is. I'm very partial to swamp rabbits, which are native to Southeast Louisiana. So this is the second of three watercolor postcard tutorials. I've already shared the Easter egg one all the way on the right with you guys. Next, we're gonna talk about the chick one. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing and clicking that bell notification, letting YouTube know that you like what you see and you wanna see more of it. And that way you won't miss the chick tutorial. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you have a wonderful day and huge thanks to my amazing art nerds on Patreon. They make tutorials just like this one possible. Thank you guys so much.